sorry. I can't hardly see you in the good day. And if that thing lots, I can't hear well either. Y'all get that later on. Yeah. Pay no attention to the man. Good morning. Good to see you, everybody. And I'm glad you can see me now. Amen. <laughs> and uh, as you can tell, Brother Martin's out this morning. He and Karen are traveling today. So be sure to pray for them. They'll have tra traveling grace and mercy if they yes. return home. We're going to open up this morning in prayer. Do you have someone or something special on your heart this morning you'd like to make a little start with them and she beat everybody else? <laughs> yeah. Bring to the cross. Yeah. Message that we were able to be a part of, they were encouraging. 
but there's been a recurring theme over the last few weeks, and that is uh, to, to get serious and to get earnest with God about prayer for our families, mm -hmm. for young people. Time's, you know, time's <coughs> always been short. Amen. But uh, time seems to be especially short in these last days. So let's lift each other up, our families, our grown children. They'll drive you to your knees faster than your little children will. Amen. And then, uh, let's get the little children in under the sound of the gospel because what they get when they're young will last them a lifetime. They may turn away from it, they may walk away from it, but it'll be there. Amen. It'll be there. Amen. Someone else had their hand up, I believe. Yes, Y'all pray for me. I'm having a situation right now that I'm having a hard time to deal with right now. Please just keep me in yes, prayers. Um, my grandson came in town and I didn't even know it until this morning. Please. And now he's headed back home to Georgia, so just keep him in your prayers that they had a safe trip going home. Amen. It's going to be all right. Bless your heart. It bothers me, though, that I didn't get to see him. Yeah. Mm. Ain't nothing breaks your heart about family, is it? Yeah. That's it. That's right. It's always those closest to us. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's, that's just the way it's always been. And that's the way it will be if the Lord comes back. But we got something on our side. We'll pray. And uh, he'll, he'll make a change. He'll make a change. Someone else, I think that's all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'd like to just ask for prayers um, for the Jewish community. Sure. I just, they're really in a lot of fear. There's a lot of people that are Jewish just because they're Jewish, that they're being targeted mm -hmm. by violence and yes. hate and just feeling really scared to even come out in society. Mm -hmm. um, and my grandmother, you know, um, her, her best friend, was Jewish and I just loved her. She was a very good woman and um, Raven's scholarship uh, was given to her by um, the Sloans who were Jewish and they're very giving people that, you know, full academic scholarship and we just must pray for those people and all people, you know, both sides of any conflict. They're all God's children, like I said before, and we just have to really pray for a supernatural thing to occur. And if you could just keep our family, Jacob and Carrie are here with us, and these are um, my children, Callie, who's in heaven. These are her children, and they're here for the first time together, Jacob Amen. and Carrie, since her passing. So if we could just keep their family in, yes, yes. in prayer, please, too. Yes. Praise the Lord that they're here, because Callie's shining from heaven today, that they're in this church, because she loved this church, and she loved Pastor Marvin and everybody here. Thank you. And uh, do remember our nation and our leaders. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm a history major, and uh, our country's looking more and more like 1920s Germany every day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one thing to live in hate, you know, when it's out there. It's another thing to see it displayed every day. Yeah. 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 You wake up. So, Lord, help our nation and help our leaders. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'd like to, <clears throat> I'd like to a praise report. I'd like to praise God for saving me. And uh, we just had a 23rd wedding anniversary. Well, amen. And I praise him for giving me the wife that I have and just being patient with me. Amen. amen. Bless you, Lord. This is good to hear a praise report. Anyone else? Anyone anywhere? They are looking good. Over yes, sir. It's been, got a good crowd out this morning. We welcome everyone. And uh, as a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and do that now. Do we have any first time visitors? Well, it's good to have you this morning. We'll, we'll uh, give you a little something to remember us by. Yeah. And uh, welcome and make yourself at home. Uh, I know it's a little different when the pastor's not here. You've got this crazy thing to work with. But, uh, I'm only here for a little while. Yeah, man, so don't judge the whole church based on my crazy. <laughs> Anybody else anywhere this morning? Jacob's the first time. Jacob. Hey, he's first time over here today, Brother Derek. Mm -hmm. Jerry. Young man over here on the end. Okay. We'll be right with you. Well, let's do this then. If, uh, maybe by uplifted hand, you've got something special on your heart this morning. Huh? We'll go. Don't forget Linda. Don't forget Linda. Oh, I forgot Linda. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was afraid she was still mad at me from calling her down already. <laughs> She's a missionary student over there, and I pray for her family here. There the Gaydon's on the front row. Uh, but she feels the Lord needs her to be there. He sent her there, and she's planning to stay as long as he, he needs her there. Yes. Pray for the children and to get back in the church and back to their families. And we praise the Lord for Lee Whitaker. He had a CT scan this week. <coughs> And they were looking to see if he had cancer in his lungs, but he did not. Praise the Lord for that. He has other issues, and he does need some liver testing. But that's due to some of his lifestyle in the past. Uh, pray for Gloria Barfield. She's still having trouble with her ankle, and she doesn't know. She hasn't got the report from her x-rays yet. Pray for the Tommy Schluter family. He passed this week. Pray for Declan Slock Shaw. He's a 10-year-old child. He's had five concussions playing football. And he's beginning to have memory loss. Pray for Kay Hill. She's lonely, but she's doing well. Pray for Cal and Judy. Lewis Taylor's brother, Toby Taylor, died this week. His services are his, are not here, and I haven't heard anything about when they are, but if you could drop him a card, that would be great. His sister also is in the nursing home, and uh, Pauline asked that we pray for world peace. Yes, wouldn't it be great? Amen. But we know there's not going to be peace until Jesus comes again. Pray for April uh, Hatches. Hatcher, with a T-R instead of an S. Okay, I'll do that better. Okay. A Diane's son, Hatcher. Donald Dennis, was near death last week. I don't know if he's passed or not. But pray for her. Pray for Diane. I don't, I don't know what her name is, whether it's Dennis still or not. Pray for Robbie Maddie Allo. She had an auto accident. Somebody ran in her T-bomber. She'd been in the hospital for over a week. Uh, she's having bladder spasms, and she's on a heart monitor, so I don't know what all. But this girl, when we had the bad storm and all the winds and the hail back in August, the tree fell on her trailer and demolished it, and she's had, had to see that dragged out. She's trying to get her a house. Now she's going to have to get her a car, so pray for this girl. Oh, mm -hmm. um, let's see. And we did the tennis. And Murray Treadgill was a young man. Uh, he went to set his gun down beside a tree, and it went off and shot him through his arm. And uh, we don't know. He's had had three, two surgeries and was to have another one. But we don't know if he's going to be able to keep the arm or not. But pray for the Treadgills and the family. And they ask for thanks for the, all the prayers. Pray for the detention center. Pray for Melissa Adams. She works down at the uh, prison down in Asheboro. And uh, they need your prayers. Shirley Gaines has started her physical therapy this week. It's only one time down, but hopefully that she's going to have some results. Mary Ann Winham is, has, is going to have a heart ablation in December, and so is Shirley. Is that Watch, a watchman implant? Watchman implant. I've had the She's had the ablation. I got mixed up, but look at me. I'm just getting old. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy and Frida Poole lost a son this week. Pray for them. 
Virginia Dawson Booth is doing better. She's been through a whole lot since her back surgery, but her back's doing well, but she's having other issues. Braylon, Ad Braylon Adams had a tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy this week. Hopefully she's doing well. Diane Ray is driving home. This we consider this her home, but her real home for years has been in Wisconsin. And she's on the road by herself, but she should be in today. So keep keep her in your prayers. Uh, la, 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 la. Sister Diane came to Ohio last night, and she's on her way, and uh, Ohio may never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> But bless her heart, we can't wait to see her. She comes down usually, or has for years, and stays down here in the wintertime because it's so cold up in Mich uh, Wisconsin, and then she goes back up in the summer. And do pray for that uh, Caleb Doolin, that young man, that 16-year-old, that he's, the Lord knows and has him in his hand. Pray for our military, our country, and our leaders. Thank, thank you, Lord, for the love and protection that you give us. And I think I'm through. Anybody else got anything on the heart? Yes, for sure. I want to welcome my friends, Edith and Teresa. They came to the revival, but today's their first day to our well, church. We sure had a good time with them. So I appreciate them coming back. We do too. We're going to do it a little bit different this morning, just to shake the devil up a bit. If we can get the ushers to come on, we're going to double up the prayer for the offering and the, for the prayers that have been asked this morning all at one time. So if we can get the ushers to come forward, we'll have prayer. Now that's a sneaky way of me saying I got a two-hour message. <laughs> 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 Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you for sacrificing your son to come down to this earth and give his life on the cross for our salvation so that we might know we have a home in heaven. Lord, number one, number two, for one here today that did not know you as their search, as their personal savior, let the day be the day they come forth, Lord. Lord, thank you so much for this congregation. We just ask that you'll bless everyone as they go and come today. Let the Holy Spirit come and go through these pews, Lord, and mm -hmm. touch each heart that we go through this service, Lord. Also, we need this prayer request that I tell you that you've heard here today. We know you know what the most timely fashion to deal with them is, Lord. Lord, just put the message we got from Brother Charles on his heart. Let him breathe it, breathe it to us, Lord, and bring it to us that we can apply it to our hearts, Lord, and take it out us as we go this day. Thank you again for the many blessings you do. We just thank you. We'll be good steward for this offering we're about to receive. And we'll do everything with this in your praise and honor and glory. It's in your name I ask. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Dave Joe's birthday. You can <laughs> He is 99 and 400 years old. <laughs> Yeah. 
trials should come. Let these plans to shoot control that Christ has regarded my helpless state and hath shed With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, my sin, of this glory. My sin not in part, but the whole <laughs> is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my testimony has been given earlier, no matter whether it's here or there, there's a healing coming. No doubt we've all been in places where we thought it was it. We thought that was the end of it. We become overwhelmed with circumstances and trials and we just want to go hide somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to be at today in Psalm 55 verses 1 through 6. If you've got your Bibles. And, uh, but uh, on Tuesday night, I sort of gave you know this thought hit me, so this has all come together real quick. And I was kind of joking earlier when I said it was two hours. I don't, I don't put any time limits on. I have no promises, but we will stick to the rule that if I say I'm closing three times, then I have to quit. That's just the rule. But if you uh, will, and uh, we'll, we'll read out of Psalm 55, verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> the Psalm of David. <clears throat> trying to get a stroke through this morning. Uh, there are some heretics in the last day who say this was not a psalm of David, and they go to arguing all these different points, trying to prove that they're smarter than everybody else. I, I, I'm really, I'm getting sick to death of modern day preaching. Been in discussions this week where the preachers, now I'm talking about just one, I'm talking about several that decided that the altar's not of any use anymore. That's the craziest thing I have heard in my life. Uh, they say the public profession is not necessary. It's all between you and God. I'm just telling you, if you get saved and something as big as God moves in, you're going to want to tell somebody. Even though you should not have to, they should be able to see what's going on in your life. I, I'm just, I'm sick. That we don't preach about the cross. We don't preach about hell. I'm just, I'm tired of the whole mess. And as Lord as allows us to, we're going to preach in the old time way. Amen. It's the only thing that will work in this modern day. You see what kind of condition both society, the world, and the church is in today because of this limp-wristed preaching. Yeah. Now, if you don't like that, I'm sorry. But that's just the way it is. Right. We need to get back 
But this is a psalm of David. He says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Yes. Untend unto me and hear me. Man, we get serious about our prayer life like David was here. I mean, crying out from the bottom of his heart, Give me attention. Hear me. Attend to me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is so pained within me. And the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. And horror hath overwhelmed me. And here's the verse we're going to take our text from today. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest. But it don't end there. Lo, when I would wander off and remain in the wilderness, Selah, amen. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and the tempest. Father, I pray that you be with us this morning. Lord, you'd hide us behind the cross. Help us not to misspeak. The Lord, fill us with the Spirit. Touch every heart. Lord, be in the pulpit today. Be in the pews. May everything that we say and do bring honor and glory unto you. And Lord, if there is one here today that is overwhelmed, if there is one here today that just is longing for escape, Lord, should there be one here today that is still lost and undone and in their sins, I pray this would be the day that this message would be a help. And, Lord, that they may not leave this service today without getting to you. And, Lord, having that heart restored and being lifted up. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. So, I got to think, one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to learn to fly. Amen. Right now, Stay too close, too low to this old earth, this world, and the things get me down. You see, in my natural birth and in my flesh, I'm a glass half empty kind of guy. Some mornings I get up and I don't like me. Let me say that again. Most mornings I get up and I don't like me. Got nothing in this world to complain about, yet anger comes in. Depression. Depression is real, my friend. It is a condition of the human heart. It is a condition of the human physics. There are some days I don't want to get out of bed. The depression is so dark and deep. I get overwhelmed with the pressures of the world. The obligations to the secular world, the responsibilities to the spiritual world, the my family that I've seen raise up and now seem to turn away and walk away. Family within and others that we take. We've raised several families that didn't have no place to go. And we'll bring them up, we'll show them how to walk and how to go. And now we, we you know, they'll, they'll cross the street to keep from having anything to do with us. What has happened? Depression is real. Sadness is real. Overwhelming is real. And David knew all about that. For when he wrote this song, he was hiding in the caves. His world had been turned upside down. And he said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. What's going on over here? Well, I'm telling you, there's times in our life where things just get out of hand. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Most of those times, it's problems that I've helped create. Y'all shake your heads and quit acting like you don't know what I'm talking about. Most of the things that go on in my life are problems that I've contributed to by either not following after the Holy Spirit of God, knowing what God's plan is and determining that I know better than Him, or just deciding that I didn't like that way and I'm going to go my own way. And then those problems magnify like a cancer. They get in there and they take root and they begin to grow until all of a sudden you become sick from it. And if you don't deal with it, it can kill you spiritually. I mean, if we were walking in victory like the victory that's been given to us already by Christ's death on the cross, 
We can overcome these issues, but yet when they come, they tear us down because we are yet in the flesh. We're yet human. You hurt me, and I'm going to feel it. We talked about how the loved ones that we love the most are the ones that hurt us the deepest. Amen. Now listen to me. I'm still quite mountain in my ways. I'm not from around here. No. <laughs> you hit me, I may give you a cheek. I may give you the second cheek. But on that third time, one of us is going down. <laughs> I'm still in the flesh. You mess with my family, you'll get the very worst of me. <laughs> I'm still in the flesh. Yep. When my family messes up, it gets the worst of me. You know, it breaks me. Yeah. David knew all about that. This was a prophetic, one of the last of the four prophetic songs. He's talking about the coming times that we're living in now, the coming Antichrist, which the spirit of Antichrist, according to the Word of God, has been alive from day one. We're just waiting for that man to show up to take the role. He, it's a, it's a, I can't, I must, yeah, that word there. I told you, I ain't from around here. <laughs> it's not a psalm of praise. It's not a psalm of worship. It's a psalm of instruction. He said, I've been through this. And because I've been through this, and because I've learned from it, I'm sharing it with you so that you can learn from that experience as well. Because I know that you are going to end up in the same place that I am right now. And David wrote it all down. You see, he was in his darkest hour. Absalom had turned against him. Absalom had all but taken over the kingdom. His chief advisor, Ahithophel, had done the same as well. All those that he'd seen that were close to him had turned their back on him. And there is, if you have not experienced that already, there is coming a day in your life when it will seem like everyone that you trusted, everyone that you loved, and those that you counted on and would never turn their back on you will do so. And you'll find yourself heartbroken. Yep. Yep. And like David, maybe not in a physical cave, but in a dark place. I want you to look at what he did in this psalm of instruction to help him as he made his way through. Hey, he was weeping. He was crying out to God from a broken heart. And that's when you want to get serious with God's when your heart's broken. That's right. yeah. Now we'll say, now I'll lay me down to sleep. Or we'll say, Lord, bless this food. And we'll just go through the motions. But when you get broke all the pieces, that's when you're going to get serious about getting into the presence of God Crying out. Now listen, it's one thing again to cry out. It's another thing to listen. That's right. Amen. He Amen. will speak to us. Amen. He will provide for us. But it may not be in our time that we would like to see it happen. And the answer may simply be no, not this way. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do it this way. And that's when we have to listen and follow and obey him and trust him. He knows the best way. We walk in dark ways. There's no sure about it. I mean, look at what's going on around us. I mean, it, it's getting darker and getting darker. And there's been many times in my life when I wished in my heart that I could just fly away and leave it all behind. That's right. But it don't change. That's right. Bless the Lord. Now, I don't know, this is just a real quick outline, but I've heard testimony already today, and I don't know where you're at, but listen, flying away is just a temporary thing. Yes. We've had loved ones in our family that have determined that life was so hard, and the pain was so great that they took their own life. Mm -hmm. Now, it may have allowed them to fly away for a little while, but it didn't change what was going on here, and it left many people heartbroken. If you're here this morning and you're fighting depression, there's a bless the Lord. By faith in Jesus. Come on. There's an answer. And ending your life doesn't change anything for those that you leave behind. That's right. You say, well, if someone who takes their life, they can't be saved. You better be real quiet. Uh -huh. I'll take the Bible and I'll show you over and over again. You be real careful how you judge. Yeah. If you ain't been in them shoes, keep your mouth shut. Yeah. 
Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 You don't tell me, you know, he's preaching. I'm that close to turning loose like I ain't turned loose in you. Uh, there you go. There you go. Right. Turn it over. Go ahead. When we get in this condition, I want you to see what this term fly away means. It don't mean turn your back and leave it. It just means I need a place to go to rest for a while. We'll get into that. What happens? What do you need to do when you get there? First thing you need to do is just make some noise. Let God know what's on your heart. Let others in the church know what's on your heart. Somebody in here has probably already been down that road. And if it's the best we can do is just put our arms around you, hug your neck, and say we'll pray with you, that's the very best thing we can do. That's right. Look at Job and all his trouble and all that he lost. He lost it all in an afternoon. Found himself sitting in the ash pile, scraping off the boils. When his wife came out and said, just because God died, he lost her then as well. Then his buddies showed up, sat there for a week, looked at him, and never said a word. That was the very best thing they did. Because when they opened their mouth, they began to try to figure out what Job had done to God to make him so mad at it. A lot of times, all we need to do is just hold around each other's hands, hug around the neck, and just pray. We need to make some noise, but primarily not just to those around us, but unto the one that can change. Now listen, he's God. He knows. He knew about it before you had ever come to it. And he has a plan to get you out of it and to make you grow and to be stronger through it. But he wants you to tell him about it. It's like us. We've talked about how our children grow up and turn away and don't even come back to us. He's our heavenly father. He wants to hear us get on what's on our heart. Not only does he want to hear us, he made a way through the sacrifice on the cross that it said in the Hebrews that Jesus, our great high priest, took the blood of the cross, went into the holy of holies, presented himself a sacrifice. The veil was rent so that we ourselves can go to the very throne room of God and crawl up on our Father's lap, cry out, Abba, and let him know what's got us torn up. Let him know what's going on. He knows already. He just wants us to tell him all about it. He loves to hear from his children. Amen. Make some noise. And David began to cry out. Amen. And don't quit praying. We get tired. We don't see it going our way. We don't see the answer. We don't see what tomorrow holds. And after a while, we sort of just get used to living in the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, that just must be the way it's going to be. I think I'll just sit here and wait for God to come. <laughs> no, do not stop. Continue to pray. Continue to let him know. Like I said, he knows already. He just wants to hear it from us. And there's no shame in crying unto the Lord. Amen. Now listen, uh, being from the mountains and being a man, we've raised up. You ain't supposed to cry about nothing. Yeah, man's tough. I remember when my grandma died. You know, we stayed with her, and we, we helped them out, and I was still in school. And The thing I remember most about the service is trying not to shed a tear, because I didn't want to show nobody I wasn't a man yet. You know, I was 13, 14. That's ridiculous stuff. We're to cry out unto God. I don't cry about it as spilled milk. Don't be crying about little old things that don't amount to a hill of beans. But when it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to your spiritual health, when it comes to your heart being broken, there's no shame in crying unto God. Right. He says that he bottles up our tears, that he cares for us. He knows what we're going through, and he has a way prepared if we'll only listen. Not only do we need to make some noise, we need to be specific about what's brought us to where we're at. Name it out loud. Say it out loud. It says, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, David felt the whole world had turned his back on us. Now listen, I'm going to get into it here in just a minute. But sometimes just saying it out loud 
makes it real <coughs> for you. Everybody else already knows about it. But sometimes we deny it to ourselves, thinking that we'll get through. Yes, no. On a personal note, I told them at work, next year's my last year. I, got, I can't do it no more. I'm worn out and tired. I've got other things that I feel like I'm called to do. I've got priorities now that are much more important than that. And it's killing me because I've been working since I was a little young. I've been working officially since I was 15. And the thought of not working is scaring me to death. But I've been saying it out loud over and over and over again. And you know what? It's starting to get easier. There you go. You can do it. You can do it. It's starting to get a little bit easier each time. So sometimes we need to just tell him what's on our heart, what's got us broken. He knows, but he wants to hear it. Now listen, here's the second thing. Now David was crying out. Perception versus reality. In reality, the whole world had not turned against David. In reality, even though Absalom was in Jerusalem and on the throne, he was not the king. God had still anointed David. It didn't change the fact that David was still king. So sometimes our perception of just how bad things are don't really stack up with reality. It's hurtful. We're in a bad way. But if we could just take the blinders off a little bit and see the bigger picture, we find out that maybe it's not just as bad as we thought. Not always. Sometimes it's worse than you thought. Know. <laughs> but in a way, we got the key. Say it out loud. Name it out loud. Be specific in your prayer. I know it's okay to say, Lord, your will be done. But it's also okay to say, Lord, here's what I'd do if I was you. <laughs> now, I'd be a little bit facetious there. We're always to pray according to his will. Yes. But it don't hurt for us to say out loud what's God's broken. It allows us to deal with it. It allows us to identify it. Yes. He already knows, but he wants us to say it. Now here's the situation, and I've heard it mentioned already this morning, we've all gone through it. When we lose a loved one, it breaks us apart. That's right. Sometimes it even feels like we're that close to death ourselves. Yeah. You've heard me say it before, it's worth saying here. In the life of a Christian, death ain't no big deal. Nope. I'm not ready for it. I don't have the grace I need for it. It's already waiting on me wherever that is. But I'm going to a better place. But when we lose somebody we love, I can't imagine losing a child. Some of you have done that. I, I, I've been, I've conducted services, one of the, uh, been in services, one of the tough services we were in was my cousin Chuck lost one of his twin boys. What were they, two? They were just one. Uh, they were in the bathtub, he turned his back for a minute, one of them drowned. Oh, no. But while we were in the service in that little wicker basket, there was another one just like it running around. Now they're grown now, but that was a tough kid. Yeah. But when we lose somebody, there's other ways to lose other than to death. And I'm not sure which one's worse sometimes. Absalom was lost, but he wasn't yet dead. Now what do you mean by that? Here's what I want to stick some time now. It's, it's bad when we lose love on to death. That's fine. It'll soon be three years since Daddy's died. I get it ain't over. Yeah. Then many of you here this year have to walk that way. And you won't get over it. No. I heard a preacher say one time, you kind of get used to the idea, but you never really get over it. Yeah. What I mean by that is, is you understand that it's time. It's, we're not going to see him again here on this flight. But you never really get over <clears throat> My grandmother loved the roses. Bless her heart. First Friday or Saturday of every month, we'd load her up in the truck, take her to town, and she'd get six months worth of groceries. She'd put on that rose perfume. And there's still times. When we'll walk by a rose bush and see it bloom. 
Not on the seed of life. What I see are life current members. Amen. But uh, we all experience loss. But here David was more worried about absent than was yet living, but was lost. It would soon cost Absalom his life. You may be here this morning, and not unlike a lot of us, you've got children that have grown up and turned their back on you and walked away. I don't know, I've not lost a child. I pray and never do today. But the hardest thing I've faced in my lifetime is to raise up a young that says, I don't want you anymore. I don't love you That hurt. And that they knew about it. Some of them lost to sin. Now that's an eternal loss, my friend. We still have hope that we might see those that have walked away from us, but if you die in your sin, that's an eternal loss. That's why we need to keep being serious about yes. praying for our children and our grandchildren and all those that are in our lives. They die without Jesus, there's no hope. No, I don't care what anybody else preaches. I don't care how much money you contribute. I don't know how care how good you were in this lifetime. I don't care if your ancestors did found the church. It don't matter. It's a personal thing. Yes. If you haven't called upon the name of Christ and you die in your sins, you are lost forever, eternally in hell. That's right. Some are lost to addiction. Hmm? Some are lost to crime, usually out of addiction. Some are lost to the flesh, to the lust of the flesh. But here's the one that really tears you up. A lot of people are lost to religion. A formality, a form of, but no Holy Ghost living in, no Jesus in their life. I don't know which of those categories would be the hardest to be saved from. Maybe religion because you think you got it all fixed. You don't see a need. Lord help us to get serious about the loss. Loss is loss is loss, no matter what form it comes in. But we have a way to get over that. So what it's saying here is I know that it seems like my life's turned upside down. I'm overwhelmed with it. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know where to go to. I don't know what's going to come of it. I'm torn to pieces. Lord, I've cried out to you. I've made some noise. Now it comes to the part where we need to expect to escape for just a little while. There was a time in my life, and I'm, I'm, I don't mean to keep preaching on personal, but it's my experience. Like David's giving us his experience, I'm giving you my experience. There's a time that I became so hurt inside the church from them that I had determined to be my mentor, my, uh, the one that taught me about everything I knew as a young Christian, thought for sure would last forever. And we came to a pathway in our lives where we couldn't walk together anymore. And a decision had to be made. And so we had to choose to either continue on being miserable, knowing that what was going on was against everything the Spirit was convicting me of, or to break that relationship. And we had to separate. We had to go our own ways. It's a shame. I don't ever want anyone to ever have to do that. But it broke me. And I just needed to escape. Just a place to rest for a little while. I'd become worn out. I'd become burned out. Didn't know what to do, where to turn. No one else for there. Everybody I thought that I could turn to, like David, seem to be far away and on a different planet and on a different mindset with God. It's a natural human reaction to just want to cover up. You know, it's like a, you figure it that until the storm passes. Just give me a place to rest, a place to catch my breath, a place to get some strength back. That's what David's really talking about here when he was saying, I wish I could just fly away. <clears throat> it's, it's 
We just need a place where we can regather and regroup. Elijah had it when he had the big showdown on call. Mm -hmm. He said to them, how long will you halt between two gods? If God's God, worship him. If Baal's Baal, worship him. He brought those 450 prophets and all those others. They had the big showdown. God showed up, showed out. He killed all those prophets. And everybody run down off Mount Carmel. It hadn't rained in three years. And all of a sudden, he looked out there and they said, they saw clouds coming. Rain was about to come because the nation had returned to God. Yes, but no sooner had that happened, Jezebel said, I'm going to take your head off, big boy. He went from being up on the mountain, filled with the Spirit, knowing that he was in the center of God's will. And the next day, not only did he come down from the mountain, but he broke through the valley and ended up in a wilderness. So much so that God had to send the ravens to feed him. One day we're up. You may not need this message today. You will tomorrow. If not tomorrow, the next day. But we need a place to rest. And Elijah found a place to rest. God's always had a place to rest. And that's what David's saying. I don't want to fly away and turn my back on it forever. I just want to rest for a little while. And I'm trying to hurry. And, and trying to hurry does not count as I'm closing. For <laughs> Desperation is real. The limbs are real. They can all be overcome. They are all not final. The only thing that's final is death. Again, if you're here this morning and those thoughts have entered into your mind, see someone, talk to someone. It's, there, there's an answer, and we can help you find that way. So he wasn't talking about escape. But what I really wanted to talk about this morning is don't be satisfied with being like the dove. In Jeremiah 48 and 28, it says, O ye that dwell in Moab, leave the cities and dwell in the rock, and be like the dove that maketh her nest in the sides of the hole's mouth. The dove can never escape the storm. Now we're getting deep here, if you if you'll go with me. All the dove can do is to fly away and find a place in the rock to rest. I'm glad. That if I need a place to rest, there's no better place to rest than in the cliff of the rock that is Jesus. Right. Amen. 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 But I have to learn to fly again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like a dove. All I can do is find a place to hold up and wait for the storm to pass. Now, the thing about the dove also is to reinforce that is that Noah's dove could not escape the the storm and the flood. You know, he sent the dove out and the dove came back and couldn't find a place to rest. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, the dove did bring back a sign that there was a place of rest. But he could not outfly the storm. Matter of fact, the dove was a clean, a, a clean animal made for a sacrifice. As a matter of fact, it was the poor man's blood sacrifice. Uh -huh. I don't want to get into much detail, but each month, the ladies had to offer up a sacrifice in order to be ceremonially clean to go back into the temple, and that was eight doves. So if we're going to be happy with being a dove, we then should expect that our cells would become sacrifice. Clean, but a willing sacrifice and an acceptable sacrifice. The dove is also a symbol of the Holy Spirit. You all know this verse, Matthew 3 and 16, when Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened up unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lying upon him. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with being a dove while we're here. The thing I want you to say is, we now, since Jesus went to the cross, have the ability to fly higher than the uh, what do you mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Have I lost you? Nope. 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 Instead of expecting just to fly away and rest, mm -hmm. we should learn, one day I will, learn to fly in victory. But they that wait upon the Lord, yes. you all know this scripture, mm -hmm. shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. 
We have been made to where we can fly, not just through the storm, but we can fly above the storm. Yes. I'm hurrying. That's my second. I'm hurrying. Which counts as one. I'm close. <laughs> Are you all keeping up with the rules? Yep. Yes. Uh, you're looking at me funny. I'm afraid I lost you. I know it's, it's just a minute or two after 11, but that don't mean we have to quit. And that quit don't count as quit. So I'm still down the stage. I'm going to get cards made up so we can keep them in the back. So instead of looking at the clock, you'll look to see how many I'm, I'm not going to say because that'd be the third one. <laughs> one day when he calls me, I'm really going to be set free. So I'm just waiting on the climb. That's right, yes. And notice I'm going to fly. Yeah. I am going to fly. And one day when I learned to fly, I really experienced that victory that's been won for me on the cross. Yeah. Let me give you these verses and then we're going to stop. Now, I've never used that term before. That just counts all three, which means this is it. First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not. I know that some have left us and some have lost, but we're not to grieve and we're not to be sorrowful. If they're saved, we know where they're at. Right. If they're saved, we're going to where they are, of course saved. Amen. Our question is today is, are you saved? We're going to ask that question one more time. Yes. For if we will believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. One day we will fly. One day he will step out. One day the trumpet will sound. Then those that have gone before us will be raised up first. And then we which are alive and remain, we are going to learn to fly. And we will meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It may be looking bad right now. It may be looking tough right now. Whether it's in the world, whether it's in the church, whether it's in your home, it may be looking bad right now, but there's a better day of coming. We're closer and closer than we've ever been before. All we have to do is determine in our heart that when we become overwhelmed, when it seems like all is hopelessness, we can fly away like the dove for just a little while to rest. We're not done. We're not out of it. We're coming right back into the fight for the victory has already been one, and when that trumpet sounds, we are going to mount up with wings of eagles, and in a moment, and in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be with him forevermore, and we'll fly out of here forever, and forever, and forever, amen, and amen. Until then, do not give up hope. Until then, there is no quitting place. Until then, it may get rough, it may get rougher, but we have a promise and a hope that that day is just around the corner. Amen. I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't know what's going on in your heart. I don't know what's going on in your home. But I'm telling you, if there's an answer and you can find it here at this altar. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to sneak over and play a little bit on the piano, but I want to ask you this question. Do you know in your heart that if you were to die right now, that you would go to heaven, that you are saved beyond the shadow of a doubt, that you've accepted the blood of Christ in your life, if you're here, then you can't answer that question, my friend, you're lost. Now, I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to pull you out. And I'm not going to try to bully you into some kind of false profession. But if you'd like for me to pray this morning with you, Lord, I'm lost and undone. Save my soul. If you raise your hand, I'll just pray. Anybody, anywhere. I see that hand. Amen. I see that hand. You might be here this morning and say, I'm just beat up. I know I'm saved, but I'm going to wear out. His body's quitting on me. It hurts. My family's turning back on me. It hurts. It just hurts. And you 
want me to pray, I'll pray for you. And you got it. You your hands are going up all over the place. Father, I pray this morning. As this offer's open, if you need this offer, you come on. Come on down. Father, we pray this morning. We ask that you touch that heart and raise the hand. Lord, that you give them the peace within, knowing that they can be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, that this would be their day. Father, I pray for those that are making their way to the altar this morning. Lord, that I thank you for this good altar. Lord, we're hurt. It hurts. I'm hurt. Lord, it be your will to take away the hurt. Lord, it be your will that we keep the hurt. And Lord, help us, remind us, give us wings, give us a place to rest. Father, most of all, we just want to thank you for your love and your kindness and your patience. <coughs> we ask in Jesus' name. May you stay at this altar as long as you need.